See the fellows? Okay, here's what we're up to in this episode. You would have seen us make a transparent oil pan, differential cover, a radiator, and a bunch of other stuff. And today we want to try making a transparent intake manifold to see how the mixture moves along inside of it. Yeah, we want to see what that looks like. And here's what we'll be using. A slab of plexiglass, a couple of tubes, which are a bit too big, but I don't see that as a huge problem. As for that plexiglass, well, we looked around and um, we couldn't find any that was perfect. So we'll be using this piece right here. It seems to be contaminated, and those don't even look like air bubbles. Might be from the recasting or something. In any case, you can see through it. We will see what's going on inside. So let's put together a transparent intake manifold, install it. Yeah, let's do this. So if you haven't been in our merch shop for a while, we have added a bunch of cool new stuff. Such as these handmade wallets and holders made out of genuine leather. It's a must-have for any dude who needs a reliable and convenient place to keep his documents. We also have an assortment of t-shirts, caps, and key fobs with a fresh design. There is a lot to cover, so better you head on over to our shop and check out what we got. For anybody who places an order right now, I'll slip in a card with my picture and my personal autograph. Make sure to use PayPal to pay for your order, so that it goes through with no issues. Add something new to your collection of Garage 54 merch, and receive a card with my autograph. So head on over to our online shop, and the link, of course, is going to be in the description. We make a transparent intake manifold. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check it out. We were very much able to glue these two chunks of plexiglass together. This is dichloroethane at work. Now the surface, I guess you can say it was polished, but it definitely had a few scratches on it here and there. But with how well that stuff softens and melts the material, I'd say this looks transparent enough. The seam is invisible. You can't really tell that this cube consists of two pieces. And that's nice. So this is ready to be worked on. Now we're gonna go ahead and make a mounting surface for the carburetor, tap some thread for the studs, which should be fairly easy to do, and then we'll start work on the channels that'll guide the mixture. Then we try starting the car and see what happens. Let's get to it. So here is where we're at with the whole transparent intake manifold project. We did what we could to polish the receiver. It looked all right initially, but then we started seeing small cracks. We have no idea how that happened. That's either age or tension. In any case, this will allow us to see at least something. The entire point of doing this is because we're curious to see how the mixture moves along through the manifold. Anyway, let's carry on making 
Granted, you shouldn't be angling stuff at 90 degrees wherever you have air coming through, but in our case there aren't many alternatives. Not to mention that the tube is slightly bigger than we'd like. That said, everything is dialed in. Now four cylinders, two and three, the runners are going to be routed like so. That's 90 degrees, maybe even a bit more. As for cylinders 1 and 4, with them we have a bit of space to play with. And so those runners will look like... I mean, the angle is still going to be 90 degrees, but the additional section is going to smoothen out the airstream somewhat. What matters is that the tubes have been polished so thoroughly that they are very transparent, which is quite nice. Now we just gotta glue all of it together. Yeah, let's piece it together and see what happens. Check out what we've got here. We've installed the manifold using some large diameter heat shrink wrap. We got all of it nice and warm. Everything is connected. And the manifold is ready. Complete with a bit of backlighting. In order to get a better view. Also the gasoline we're using... ...contains a bit of oil which is colored green. That's to get a better look at the processes occurring. Easy now. Okay, well, it works. Come on now, we need you to run stably. Well, you can definitely see what's going on in person. It's hard to say whether it'll come through on camera, though. Now, at this stage, it is very apparent that the gasoline condensates on the tubes. And I can see how the mixture is being sucked in. It's not a continuous flow. It's being pulled in pulses. Whenever a piston generates vacuum, that's when it's pulled in. And when I cover this with my hand, you can see the mixture becoming richer. We'll allow the engine to warm up and then work the butterfly valve. Yeah, this engine speed, you can barely see anything. I do think the recording will show the mixture going into not all four cylinders at once, but rather according to the order in which they're firing. So the mixture is being pulled in according to the firing order of the cylinders. Start it, please. Yeah, we are seeing gasoline on the tubes. 
But the thing is that the stock manifold for this engine, it would have gotten warm, and that would have prevented condensation. These tubes are cold, and as a result, there's a bit of condensation happening. And let's not forget that the geometry isn't ideal, though we couldn't really configure it any other way. Milling a one-piece manifold would have been a very difficult undertaking, and it would have been unnecessary for this sort of experiment. I mean, this still very much allows us to observe the mixture finding its way in. When I work the butterfly valve, you can see a lot more fuel going in. This is quite mesmerizing. Let me light this up and have a look. We've just had a minor setback. We're out of green fuel. We've decided to use some red gas instead. And let's see what happens. We are gonna see green gasoline flowing initially, because there's definitely a bit left in the carby. We can actually compare them in terms of which one you can see better, the green or the red. I don't think there's gonna be a difference. You don't really see the coloration. The air-fuel mixture is all just a fog. Okay, fire it up. Yeah, there it goes. I'd say it's about the same, but let's look on. So when you're cracking open the butterfly valve, and I'd also imagine the fuel pump would feed in some additional fuel. Anyway, it appears as if it's going into all four at once. But as a matter of fact, it's actually doing so in pulses. It's going into the cylinders in a certain order. But at higher engine speeds, that's not very apparent to the human eye. So here's what's up. We were able to cook up a transparent intake manifold and see how the mixture makes it into the engine. And it wasn't like a stream. The air fuel mixture was a fog, which was very obvious and apparent. And we had our doubts, but at the end of the day this worked. And quite well at that. We had a look and the mixture, it wasn't a continuous flow into all four cylinders at once, as you'd be led to believe by your eyes. It was actually pulsing depending on which cylinder was at the intake stroke. And so there you have it. What a cool experiment this was. Doesn't matter whether the gasoline is red or green, the mixture looks the same regardless. 
There was a bit of condensation going on, but hey, this is plastic. And it was cold. Plus the runners are at an awkward angle, so there was condensation. Though it wasn't too severe. Overall, it didn't affect the experiment. We saw everything, and hopefully you did too. Okay, watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.